Hi, Wendy here. I am visiting with you from Santa Fe, New Mexico, where I'm going to share with you about George's iconic, George Rodrigue's iconic 1978 painting, The Raging Cajun. Uh, I wanted to share with you about this now because, well, anytime's a good time to share about The Raging Cajun and a great Rodrigue painting, but also because I'm packing it up this week to ship it to Lafayette, Louisiana. It's kind of coming full circle all these years later. Um, it's headed to an exhibition there, which I'll talk about in the comments, and I'll be without it for many, many months. And um, I just thought, well, you might like to know some history. First of all, let's see what George said about it. And I happen to know that what George writes about it is not true because he cleared it up for me later. But nevertheless, it's his word, so I'm going to share it. This is in the book that I know many of you know. It is one of the top Louisiana cookbooks ever. The Talk About Good 2 from the Lafayette Junior League. And look, it's all Rodrigue paintings throughout and fabulous recipes. On the cover of this cookbook is a toast Cajun food, which is owned by the Hilliard Museum in Lafayette, Louisiana, which hint is where this painting is going for their show. And I just wanted to interject here before we talk about the Raging Cajun that the reason this painting is in that collection and several of the other magnificent Cajun series paintings in the Hilliards collection is because they were donated by a couple named Robert and Jolie Shelton of Lafayette. They were really good friends of George's and mine and Jolie passed away this year, 2023. She was, well, those of you who, who knew her, know her, know. She was an earth angel and now she's an angel. Anyway, the Hilliard has the Sheltons to thank for their magnificent collection and a few other folks too, but in particular the Sheltons of paintings, including this one on the cover, Talk About Good too. Now George writes about it, and I should say too, because I don't want to forget, since I'm talking about the cookbook, um, several years ago, um, actually I think it was probably just before George passed away, so it could have been 2011, 2012, um, the Junior League printed this book again, but what they did is they flipped the back and front covers, see, of the books, and they're reprinting, and I love that too, because this is, of course, the iconic George's Kiss Me I'm Cajun, which I understand will also be in the Hilliard Exhibition of 2024, featuring his young son, Andre Rodrigue, as the young little Cajun boy holding on to a young oak, right? So pretty cool. So anyway, I bring this up because the Raging Cajun became a bit famous. Voila! Featured in this cookbook. Probably the biggest Louisiana cookbook ever. I don't know that for sure. I just know that every Louisiana house I've ever been into has it. So let's hear what George said. He says, Rodney Fontenot, an architect antique dealer in Ville Platte, Louisiana, reflects the Cajun culture in a thundering manner that is strictly his own. He has had no difficulty in finding his identity in a town of 6,000, almost 4,000, with the name of Fontenot, none claiming to be related to the others. Here I show Rodney holding his three most prized possessions, which he refuses to sell. In one hand is one of my early paintings, which he probably got for nothing. I happen to know that was true. In the other hand is one of the few remaining cans of Jack's beer, which shows his taste ha, is not in his mouth. <laughs> and the third possession is an old Coca-Cola icebox, which he has converted to a beer cooler. Now that's what George has to say about this book in 1978. But... I know better, and I know better because I interviewed George, as you know if you watch these videos or read my blog or my book, that I interviewed George for thousands of, thousands of times over hundreds of paintings, and I found myself asking him things like, when I would find stories like that, you know, George, is that really true, everything you wrote there? And one time he told me, I was asking him about Broussard's Barbershop when he told me this, he goes, oh, Wendy. After all this time, can it just be true? <laughs> so I'm going to tell you the true story of Rodney Fontenot because I dragged it out of him. And that is this. 
George and Rodney got to be really good friends in New Orleans in the 1970s. That is when they met. Rodney had a junk shop on Magazine Street there, and he fell on hard times. He ended up moving his junk shop several times to Lafayette at one point, then to Opelousas at another point, and finally back home all the way to Ville Platte, Louisiana. Now, George, when he first met Rodney, really wanted some of the stuff he got there. And in fact, he got a lot of things from there over the years. If you ever went to George's restaurant, Cafe T. George, for example, um, back in the mid-late 90s um, in Lafayette, there was a big barber's chair there. He got that from Rodney. And the Coke machine he got there. He got a number of things. And he also got frame moldings from Rodney that he, was, he would get. But this is my favorite. George wanted this coat box, and he wanted it to store his paints. He thought it would be the perfect thing in his studio, right, to store his paints. How cool, because George loved 1950s memorabilia, but he didn't have any money. He was short on cash, which I can tell you was pretty much always the case. And so he convinced Rodney to take this little painting instead, and he traded him that little painting which he painted again in this painting for this Coke box to hold his paints. It's a painting of a trade, right? Really cool. So then what happens? George is broke. I already mentioned that. George trades Rodney this painting, which Rodney had, for this coat box, which you can see today at the Bayou Tesh Museum, holding George's paints and the recreation of George's studio there, because indeed he used it for that. And then George is broke, right? And so collector in Lafayette, Louisiana, one of his best collectors, a man named Roland Bagno, he had the pharmacy there, came to George and purchased the Raging Cajun. George was really sad to see it go, but really glad to have the money because by this time, George has got a young family, including a young son about this age. Yeah, Andre. And uh, he needs money to support his family. And so he sells that painting. Years go by, and Roland Bagno at the pharmacy, some of you may remember, passed away. And his different children inherited those paintings and treasured those paintings. And one of his children had the Raging Cajun and really wanted a blue dog painting. And George always wanted the Raging Cajun back. And so he convinced her, I think it was her, to trade him the Raging Cajun for a blue dog canvas. And George got his Raging Cajun back. And it remained in our collection ever since. Now, how cool is that? Let me walk you through it again. George traded Rodney this painting for this Coke box. Then he sold his painting and he traded a blue dog painting <laughs> to get the painting back. Did you follow? It's pretty cool. The only other thing I would mention here that I think is pretty neat well, there's a lot of things about this that are neat because, of course, it's very typical Rodrigue, right? We've got our oak tree cut off at the top so that our sky is small underneath and bright in the distance, yes? It says that we're all standing underneath this oak tree and have been invited in as though we're underneath the tree to witness this exchange, this trade between George and Rodney and maybe meet Rodney and have a, have a beer with him. And then, of course, instead of in shadow beneath this oak, Rodney is glowing. There's no shadow on him from the inside out because he's not lit by the sunlight. He is lit by the inner light of his Cajun culture, of that, well, all the wonderful things that made him so distinct. Yeah, made him so Cajun, made George love him and laugh with him, and they became lifelong friends. One of the things that George would trade with uh, Rodney was frame moldings. Now, I find it interesting because I don't believe that this was one of them. This is a ready-made frame. As far as I know, that's what it looks to be to me. However, right here, we've got one. Look at this sweet little painting. 
This gives you an example of George's earlier works. This is an Acadian barnyard or a bayou house. And you can see that this particular frame matches this painting very well. And that is because George bought the frame at a junk shop, hello, and then discarded whatever painting was in it and then stretched his canvas to fit that frame and then painted his painting to the frame. So it's the opposite, right? He didn't frame to the painting, he painted to the frame because he just didn't have the money to actually go have his paintings framed. So this would have been the sort of thing that he traded and purchased from Rodney for years. The Raging Cajun, y'all. Rodney Fontenot, George immortalized him. You know, that's one of the things I think is most precious about pieces like this is that, you know, Rodney's long gone, but is he really? Thank you.